Let's look at an example. Alice and Bob are at school and write notes to each other, which their classmates pass on. To make sure that none can read the notes, they want to encrypt the messages. If they were to write the key on the first piece of paper, their classmate Eve could read the key as well, remember it and decrypt the following messages. In this case, Alice and Bob would not even notice this. To prevent this from happening with digital communication, such as on a smartphone or computer, we could use quantum key distribution in the future. Here we can send the key to each other and if someone like Eve reads along when the key is handed over, we would notice. Hey. To do this, Alice sends photons, the smallest part of light, to Bob. Since photons are not only particles but also waves, they oscillate. They can oscillate in different directions. But when they oscillate in only one direction, they are called polarized. With polarized filters we can filter photons. Then, for example, only the photons that oscillate up and down can pass through. These are then called vertically polarized. With the help of quantum mechanics it is possible to send single photons. So Alice sends polarized photons to Bob. If Bob holds his filter the same way as the photons polarized by Alice, the light passes through. If, on the other hand, he holds his filter crosswise to the direction of polarization, no photon passes through. Each photon can be measured only once. But what happens if Bob turns his filter just a little bit to Alice's polarization direction? That means he holds it diagonally. Then, sometimes a photon can pass through the filter and sometimes not. But if both polarize diagonally in the same direction, the photons all pass through again. If, on the other hand, they polarize in different diagonal directions, the photons no longer pass through Bob's filter. Alice makes notes of the polarization with which she sent the photons off. And Bob makes a note of how he held his filter and whether light was received or not. Now the two can talk publicly about how Alice polarized her photons and how Bob held his filter. Everyone can hear this. Whenever one person used the filter diagonally and the other vertically or transversely, that part gets deleted. From the remaining ones, they built the key. Why this effort? Now, let's see what happens when Eve tries to read along even with a polarizing filter. When Eve looks at the photon, meaning she holds her filter in between and looks, if light gets through, she has to send a new photon to Bob afterwards. But she does not know if she has held the filter correctly. If she doesn't see any light, she could have held her filter crosswise to Alice's filter or just slightly differently, but the photon didn't get through. If she does see light, it could still be because the photon came through with the filter slightly rotated so she may still have held the filter incorrectly. So Eve does not know if holding the filter diagonally was correct or not, nor can she try both. This is because photons cannot be copied and only be measured once. So Eve has to guess quite often what she sends on to Bob. Alice and Bob only talk later about how they used their filters and which parts they can use for their key. Eve, however, has to decide beforehand whether she was correct with diagonal or non-diagonal. But without the public conversation, she has to guess how to proceed and thus often makes mistakes. Bob makes as many mistakes as Eve, but his are simply deleted. Before Alice and Bob build their key, they compare individual digits. They don't use them for the key afterwards. But if they don't match, they know that someone has been listening. Hey! So quantum encryption is used to agree on a key. What is special is that no one can eavesdrop on it without being noticed. Since the method is based on the randomness of quantum mechanics, whether photons can pass through slightly twisted filters or not, it is considered unbreakable. 